Hey everybody, it's Trisha with Chocolate Musings, and here is my September plan with me. It's more of a paint with me, but I am setting up my bullet journal, so I guess call it what you like. I'm starting a new book this month and hope that it will last me until the end of the year. I've set up all the yearly pages and I'll show you some of those in some different videos. This month's theme is inspired by my gnome mushroom houses from that video, but instead of whimsical mushrooms, I decided to feature mushrooms you might find on a hike, in the fall, crunching through the leaves, in the woods, you know, doing all the fall foresty type of things you might imagine. I've sketched out all the pages and plan to use this gouache that Chocola sent me. Using this ceramic palette, I add a tiny dab of the gouache and then mix it with water. Not too much, just enough to make a creamy, buttery texture with the paint. Gouache is mostly opaque, so it will cover the pages very well. I have a vision in my mind's eye of how this will work, so we'll see if I can create that vision. I don't plan on smoothing out the base coat very much. I want the ridges from the edge of the paintbrush to stay, so I used a number two round brush, which is kind of small for covering this amount of space, but it adds texture to the tree bark. Once it's dry, I'll add more layers of various colors to add depth. Even though I could paint over the brown with a lighter color for the mushrooms with the gouache, unlike watercolor, which you can't really do, I decided to leave space for the mushrooms so I didn't have to work as hard to paint them. Each color I add to the tree trunk now adds texture and depth. I'll hold the number two round paintbrush very loosely farther up the handle than usual, and as I paint, twist the paintbrush around with my fingers so it adds thick and thin squiggly lines up and down the tree trunk. After adding the stump to the left, I continue to add more colors. My favorite thing to do is add shadows. So, of course, I added the shadows in with a darker color then decided to add a tree branch on the big tree. Using the same loose, twisty painting style for the bark texture, I added these gnarled branches, which I love. Now it's time for the mushrooms. I mix some peach, a bit of yellow and white, to create the base color. I don't worry about erasing pencil lines because they'll just get covered up with the paint anyway. Once the base layer is dry, I start adding depth of color and adding more detail as I go. Just painting very loosely, adding a bit of shadow here and a bit of highlight over there. Once I finish the mushrooms and everything is dry, I decide to letter the month with a Crayola Super Tip marker. When you letter with Super Tips, yes, it's possible to get the thick and thin lines, but it, it's applied a little bit differently than a brush pen. I'll add a bit of gray as a shadow and then feather it out with a clean, damp paintbrush. Let's move on to the main planning pages in my bullet journal. I was planning on having a goal page on this habit tracker page, and I left plenty of room for it if I want to include it here, but I may also use it as a list keeper, a place where I just put all the things that don't really have a place throughout the month. I outlined the boxes horizontally rather than having to turn my book each day on its side to use this page. It does create a space between part of the numbers. That's okay, it doesn't bother me. 
I hate writing numbers, so I'll use a number sticker from my shop to fill in the dates once I've painted the, the little doodles. And if we're being honest here, I don't love these doodles, but I use my bullet journal as a place to experiment with art and techniques, and I don't end up loving all of them, but some turn into something special. Moving on to the calendar spread, I did a large layout with connected boxes, six dots wide by six dots high, plenty of space to write in events and multiple events for each day. I did draw it out in pencil and then erased the dates or erased the lines that did not have dates corresponding. And then I'm just going to trace over it with a thick fine liner pen. This one is a one millimeter Windsor & Newton fine liner. I like these pens because they are rounded at the tip. This month I decided to use a ruler to help me create straighter lines. I know many people struggle with making straight lines with or without a ruler. So I have two tips in this case. If you don't use a ruler, know that your lines may be a little bit wavy. Embrace it and know that it adds whimsy to the page. The second tip, if you're using a ruler, be conscious of where you hold your ruler. It never failed that the ruler would move off course as I got nearer to the end of the line. So I'm very conscious of where I hold the ruler so it has equal pressure as I hold it down and run my pen along the side and it doesn't tend to move at the end. I've doodled a couple of mushrooms and will use the gouache paint to paint them in. Across the top of the columns, I'll write the first letter of each day. Then do a little faux calligraphy for the word September. Each weekly layout is going to have a simple grid design. Draw a line halfway down the page and halfway across the page. On a spread, it ends up as a grid of eight squares. Super simple. Since this is a new notebook, I decided to do a partial spread for the first week and have the facing page for goals and notes. And since I did letter that in, I may end up adding my goals here. I'll just do maybe three lines for goals, little bullet, bullet points there after I get done with this. And on the habit page, I think maybe I will use that as a brain dump or or like I said before, a place to keep other lists. When using this layout for weekly pages, 
you could completely use the extra square for notes, to-do lists, meal planning, shopping lists, etc. I decided to doodle a bunch of mushrooms every week and use a few different techniques each week. Some have outlines and some do not. Some I colored in with paint, others with Crayola markers. They all have a similar style as far as shading, but they all are different. I discovered that I like gouache in my bullet journal and it works better in some cases than watercolor, especially since I don't have to worry about any page bleed through. Now these pages are really thick. It's an Archer and Olive journal, but it's still regular paper. It's not watercolor paper. Gouache paint tends to sit on top of the page rather than being absorbed into all of the pages like watercolor. So that's why it works really well in some of these journals. I don't get warping and other things like that that I may see sometimes when I'm using more water with watercolor. My favorite one is the one with the blue background. It took a couple of tries to get the lines and the colors right, but I think you'll get the idea of what it should look like. And let's just enjoy that satisfying tape peel for just a minute. I'll add in the days of the week and write the numbers in each day. My kids, husband and I sat down this past week to make sure we all had all the events we needed to plan for. And I'll go back in and add those plans later. So these are some easy peasy layouts, right? Take away all the art and the paint and the markers, add in a little splash of color, maybe highlights, something like that. And you've got some designs that will take you 15 minutes or less for the month. I hope you've enjoyed my paint with me or plan with me for September. I've linked the blog post and the products I used in the comments below. Leave me a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's do a final flip through the layouts for this month. I wish everybody a great month and happy planning.